Welcome back to DJX Chronicles. This one is a poem written by Jean de la Fontaine. It's called The Companions of Ulysses. This fable was first printed in the Mercure Gallant, December 1690. Ulysses? Thanks, Luigi! To Monseigneur, the Duke of Bourgogne. Dear Prince, a special favorite of the skies, Pray let my incense from your altars rise. With these her gifts, if rather late my muse, My age and labors must her fault excuse. My spirit wanes while yours beams on the sight At every moment with augmented light. It does not go, it runs, it seems to fly, And he from whom it draws it straight so high. In war a hero burns to do the same. No lack of this, that with virtuous force, his giant strides mark not his glory's course. Some god retains our sovereign I might name, himself no less than conqueror divine, whom one short month made master of the Rhine. It needed then upon the foe to dash, perhaps today such generalship were rash. But hush, they say the loves and smiles, Abhor a speech spun out in miles, and of such deities your court is constantly composed. In short, not but that other gods as meet their hold the highest seat, for free and lawless as the rest may seem, good sense and reason bear away supreme. Consult these last about the case of certain men of Grecian race, who must unwise and indiscreet invited such droughts of poison sweet. As changed their form and brutified, ten years the heroes at Ulysses' side had been the sport of wind and tide. At last, those powers of water the sea-worn raiders bore to that enchanted shore where Circe reigned Apollo's dark. She pressed upon their thirsty lips delicious drink, but full of bane. Their reason, at the first light sips, laid down the scepter of its reign, then took their forms and features, the liniments of various creatures. To bears and lions some did pass, or elephants of ponderous mass, while not a few, I ween, in smaller forms were seen. In such for instance, as the mole of all the sage Ulysses' soul had wit to shun that treacherous bowl with wisdom and heroic mind. And fine addresses he caused the queen to swallow on her wizard throne, a poison somewhat like her own, a goddess she to speak her wishes dared. And hence at once her love declared, Ulysses truly too judicious, to lose a moment so propitious, besought that Circe would restore. His Greeks, the shapes that first they wore, replied the nymph, but will they take them back? Go make the proofer to the motley pack. Ulysses ran, both glad and sure, that poisonous cup, cried he, hath yet its cure. And here I bring what ends your shame and pain. Will you, dear friends, be men again? Pray speak, for speech is now restored. No, said the lion, as he roared, my head is not so void of brains. Renounce, shall I, my royal gains? I've claws and teeth to tear my foes to bits. And more than that, I'm king, and I such gifts away to fling. To me, but one of Ithaca's mere cities. In rank and file, perhaps, I might bear arms. In such a change I see no charms. Ulysses passes to the bear. How changed, my friend, from what you were. How sightly once, how ugly now. Humph, truly how, growled Bruin in his way. How else than as a bear should be, I pray, who taught you stilted highness to prefer one form to every other, sir? Doth yours possesses peculiar powers, the merits to decide of ours. With all respect I shall appeal my case to some sweet beauty of the bearish race, 
please pass it by, if you dislike my face. I live content and free from care, and well remembering what we were. I say it, plain and flat. I'll change to no such state as that. Next to the wolf, the princely Greek, with flattering hope, began to speak. Comrade, I blush, I must confess, to hear a gentle shepherdess, complaining to the echoing rocks of the outrageous appetite which drives you. Night by night, to prey upon her flocks, you had been proud to guard her fold. In your more honest life of old, pray quit this wolf ship now you can and leave the woods an honest man. But is there one, the wolf replied, such man I own I never spied. You treat me as a ravenous beast, but what are you, to say the least? You would yourself have eaten the sheep, which, eaten by me, the village weep. Now truly, on your faith confess, should I, as man, love flesh the less? Why man not seldom kills his very brother? What then are you but wolves to one another? Now everything will care to scan, and rogue with rogue to rape. I'd better be a wolf than man, and need not change my state. Thus all did wise Ulysses try, and got from all the same reply, as well from great as small. While liberty was dear to all, to follow lawless appetite, they counted their supreme delight. All banished from their thoughts and care, the glorious praise of actions fair. Where passion led, they thought their course was free. Self-bound, their chains they could not see. Prince, I had wished for you a theme to choose, where I might mingle pleasantry with use. And I should meet with your approving voice, no doubt, if I could make such choice. At last, Ulysses' crew were offered to my view, and there are like them not a few who may for penalty await your censure and your hate.